I think the fan base loved him as a person. I just think they wanted a better player as a quarterback. Hey everybody, Trevor Sikama here welcoming you to another edition of Bust or Broken, the brand new series where we're taking a look at a highly touted draft pick. Doesn't have to be a top draft pick because these guys could have been drafted everywhere, but whatever it was, they had a lot of hype behind them and it just didn't work out for one reason or another. And we want to find out, was this player a bust or did the team that draft them break them early on in their career? So we're going to have different experts on for different topics. We did Mitchell Trubisky for the first episode. This episode, we're doing quarterback Blake Bortles. This is a guy who is under a lot of scrutiny, a lot of spotlight. And to help me understand everything that happened with Blake Bortles, we have a very good friend of mine from the industry, Mike K. He covers the Philadelphia Eagles now, but he covered the Jacksonville Jaguars in the thick of all that Blake Bortles madness. Mike, I really appreciate you joining me for this, man. Thanks for having me. You go from Mitch Trubisky of the North, to Mitch Trubisky the South, huh? That's just kind of how we're how we could frame that a little bit. Listen, so, um, the the first show the first show did well. Like everybody wanted to hear about what was up with Mitch Trubisky, so I figure we probably just keep the quarterback train rolling. And I think that's probably probably why that we landed on Blake Bortles. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm, I'm pissed that I wasn't like the debut episode, but I think that was more <laughs> my fault than yours. It was. It was. We were trying to get you. Uh, no, obviously, no offense to Lauren because he did an awesome job, but I actually did ask you first because I wanted to debut Bortles, but this is okay that we're doing it. Uh, that we're doing it a second because these are two fantastic shows that we've got now back to back. Let's take people back in time a little bit. Blake Bortles, 2014 NFL draft, gets drafted number three overall. And this was the same quarterback class that had Johnny Manziel in it, the wild card that was Johnny Manziel, Teddy Bridgewater, Derek Carr. And I mean, before you started covering the Jaguars, people would know you were OG draft Twitter. Like you were a part of those guys on Twitter that really followed the draft, that broke down all the prospects, that had the rankings. You guys set the tone for a lot of people who are loving the draft on social media now. So you were heavily involved in the draft. And I believe if I remember this correctly, When they drafted Bortles, that was one year before you technically started covering the Jags, but you still cover the draft heavily. So what did you think of the Bortles selection at number three overall? What did you just think of that quarterback class too? Well, you know, the quarterback class, it it was coming off, you know, a year where 2012 was interesting. 2011 was kind of, uh, you know, I mean, it it was a weird, weird, the the drafting of quarterbacks has changed almost every couple of years, right? Sure. You'll, you'll see a quarterback be the top of the draft type of guy. And then you'll see, you know, a Geno Smith, E.J. Manuel sort of year, right? right so it's right. like, you know, it's intriguing to see how these guys fall. You, you'd have a year like you're about to have this year. Um, that draft class was very scattered amongst experts. So some people were Teddy Bridgewater guys. Some people were Derek Carr guys. Other people were... Um, you know, Johnny Mansell guys, right? I don't know anybody other than the Jaguars who was a Blake Bortles guy. <laughs> okay. Um, I was based in Arizona when he played in the Fiesta Bowl, had an incredible game. I had him projected as an early third round pick. Yeah. That's where I was at. Um, probably a good thing I wasn't covering the Jaguars at the time because you would have killed them. You'd have killed yeah, them. I, I would, yeah, that would have been really bad. <laughs> so I had three on my mind with Blake Bortles, I just didn't have him as the third overall pick. Mm. So, you know what I mean? Right, um, right, right. But I remember how shocked everyone was. It kind of came out of nowhere. There was no real, you know, uh, connection to them in that way. But with that said, he's a kid that grew up in Oviedo, Florida, which you and I both growing up in Florida know that pretty well. Right. Uh, two hours away from Jacksonville. Right. He went to college in Orlando, two hours away from Jacksonville, and then he becomes the local kid. And they set him up to be this local hometown hero. And, and honestly, um, when you look back at his tenure, it's it, you know, the whole this whole show is about, you know, broken or bust. He's an interesting case because you can call him a bust. Right. But when you really study him as a whole, yeah, I think he's a bust with a caveat, right? Okay. So 
I think that I think we that that kind of gets the juices flowing a little yeah. bit, right? No, that's that look, that's this is exactly what we are here to get to the bottom of. Which is why I knew Blake would be fantastic and I knew you you'd be the perfect man to get to talk about it because yeah, you look at that quarterback class and I think you're right. Nobody really thought that, that a quarterback was probably going to go as high as Blake Bortles did because at Johnny Manziel, it was like you either loved him or hated him. You know, he had the things off the field that eventually led to his career being done very early. Teddy Bridgewater, it's like there were the physical limitations that people talked about. Derek Carr, it's like a lot of people like stuff, but coming from Fresno, they, you know, he's clearly a second round pick. So uh, Jaguars invest in the hometown guy. I guess it makes sense. Rookie year obviously struggles. Second year, the team struggles, but he threw for over 4,000 yards, had the 35 touchdowns, the 18 interceptions. I mean, this was there a little bit of belief that was that actually I'll say it like this. Was that the most belief that anybody had had in Blake Bortles during his time in Jacksonville was coming off of that sophomore season he had in the NFL? Yeah, I think there was a thought process that, you know, he's even said that he's not a natural thrower of the football, but when you had, that's you not know, great. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> when you, great. Look, look, uh, Blake Bortles is the best interview player wise of my career. He, I, I don't know if anybody will top him. Nobody was more honest than he was, but when you have guys like Alan Hearns and Alan Robinson having thousand yard seasons, mm -hmm. I mean, Alan Robinson looks like the best wide receiver, best young wide receiver in the league at that point, like coming off that 1400, 14 touchdown season. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, I think there was like a heightened sense of reality and you also have to like take into context Jacksonville, right? So their, their parameter is, is Mark Brunel who for the time was good, but when you compare him now to, to other quarterbacks, I mean, look, Blake Bortles, we talk about a, a bust with a caveat. He set the single season record for, for passing attempts, completions, touchdowns, and passing yards that season. Um, he had a five touchdown game against the Titans. Uh, you know, <laughs> he's a guy who has only thrown two passes since 2019, but he's got over 1,700 yards, a career passer rating of 80.6 thrown for over a hundred touchdowns like yeah. the production's there it's the you know he's also won more playoff games than Dak Prescott Kirk Cousins Lamar Jackson Deshaun Watson and Baker Mayfield shout out that 2017 season shout out where they made it to the AFC championship right which was my last year which got me to Philly um you know <laughs> so so you so you you're you're like big thanks to big Bortles over here yeah kind of dude Philly. it was a great year for everybody um <laughs> but like you look at it this way you know the current quarterbacks in the league who are still playing who have more playoff wins than him are Cam yeah Cam Newton Nick Foles uh, Matt Ryan, Patrick Mahomes, Drew Brees, uh, Russell Wilson, Joe Flacco, Aaron Rodgers, Ben Roethlisberger, and Tom Brady. Of the that group, Cam Newton, Foles, Russell Wilson, and Mahomes, like that's from the same decade, right? right. All those other guys are older. Right. Um, right. And so it's interesting. He has the same amount of playoff wins as Alex Smith, Jared Goff, Josh Allen, Ryan Tannehill, and Jimmy Garoppolo. Like when you're putting him on like a – if you don't want to count QB wins, that's fine. But when you look at the numbers too, um, you know, he has 52 more touchdowns than Jimmy G like, like that, that's, that's crazy, right? He's got, he's got a significant amount of stats. I mean, it feels like when you talk about Blake Bortles, a lot of people can now, obviously not the playoff wins, but you could talk about them in the same light that we talk about Jameis Winston where it's like, okay, like this dude's, yo, know, he's got the passing number. He's got the touchdowns. He's got the yards, but there just came a point with Winston where, you know, obviously if you have the chance to sign Tom Brady, you're going to sign Tom Brady. But even beyond that, they were ready to give up on Jameis. And I think that that was clearly because of the turnovers. And it, it's like, he was doing good things for the offense, but he couldn't take care of the football. And it feels like, it feels like that was Blake's, deal as well and I mean correct me if right. I'm wrong but it's it, you know you you mentioned there that Blake even said himself he's not a natural thrower of the football is that just kind of what it came down to over the, the the last couple of years with his with him in Jacksonville yeah I think that's fair I think sometimes teams get to the point where they don't want to be in that like Andy Dalton purgatory yeah and that's right. really what he more of what he, he was on like the downside of that purgatory like you could win with him 
But everything else had to be really good. You had to have a really yeah. good defense. You had yeah. to have a really good running game, as we saw in 2017. Um, and so I think at some point you say, look, Nick Foles has just won a Super Bowl. Like, sure. Let's go grab bro right now. Um, but again, with Blake Bortles, he's a kid from Oviedo who played college football in Orlando, who mm-hmm. lived basically two hours away. I think that partially stunted him as a, as a leader, his maturity level, um, his focus. Uh, he was a bro. Like he was not like your typical, you know, NFL quarterback where you expect him to be this tight lace Peyton Manning, Matt sure. Ryan sort of guy. He was yeah. a guy. He was yeah. a guy you could relate to. He was very likable. I think the fan base loved him as a person. I just think they wanted a better player as a quarterback. But when you talk about a 4,000 yard season, guess what? The Eagles, who have been around since 1933, had their first 4,000 yard passing season a year ago for what? a quarterback. No way. A year ago. What? Carson Wentz, Carson Wentz in 2019 became the first 4,000 yard passer in a single season for the Eagles. So, like, think about that, right? I'm so you're, you're stunned. You're thinking about, you know, what goes on here. You want to talk about Carson's numbers, 113 touchdowns, 50 interceptions, um, 16,811 yeah. yards, 62.6 completion percentage. Again, this is the here are Blake Bortles numbers. Yeah. 59.3%, 103 touchdowns, 75 interceptions, 17,649 yards, and 80, 80.6 passer rating we talk about Carson Wentz like he's like this astronomically better quarterback than Blake Bortles but Mm -hmm. you know I mean look nine quarterback points is a pretty lofty thing but like when you look at that why is Blake Bortles a guy who's only thrown two passes since you know 2019 right Mm -hmm. like that's the thing too when you look at where he's at I mean he had to wait till he could be a practice squad eligible guy to be on a squad this year it's just it's wild right Mm -hmm. i mean so that's why he's a bust with a caveat in my opinion i think the league sometimes looks at these guys as all or nothing when realistically you know he was on a squad with a guy like jared goff who if you compare the numbers jared goff's only a little bit better than him Mm -hmm. like from a number standpoint right and from a big game standpoint like like that's the thing so I, I, I think it's interesting i i think that there's something to yeah maybe his his off the field presence or demeanor and like that being a big reason why guys might believe in you a little bit more or why the leash might be a little bit longer but the last thing that I had to, that i had to talk about to give a little bit of context to blake bortle is because he you know he had he clearly had the the early season where he, he put up some monster numbers and then they had a 2017 year where the defense is great behind him. The run gate was good, good around him and they made it to the AFC championship game. Miles Jack wasn't down, probably should have made it to the super bowl. But what about the offense coordinator thing? Because he had a lot of offense coordinators over his career in Jacksonville. And that's, I mean, like not that I, I want to pile on too much defense for the guy. Cause he was the one still turning it over, but you got a lot of different voices in your head early on in your career. That doesn't really help you. Does it? No. So he had jet fish is his first year. Then they switched to Greg Olson. Greg Olson got fired in the middle of the 2016 season. Uh, was replaced with Nathaniel Hackett, who was the offensive coordinator then through 2008, the midway point of 2018 was replaced by quarterbacks coach, Scott Milanovic. Um, yeah, I mean, That's a look, lot. it's a lot of voice. That's a lot. I mean, those guys, look, they're all quarterback background guys. It's not like, you know, Hackett was his quarterback's coach before he was promoted. Mm-hmm. Uh, Milanovic was the quarterback's coach, whatever. But, like, yeah, it's a lot of voices. The only constant he really had in that room was Chad Henney. And Chad Henney, really good guy. I don't know if he was the type of influence for him long term. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, so... Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Look, you compare guys to each other, and I mean... Bortles got some numbers. Bortles Bortles got some numbers. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Yes. Who who had a better first three years to their career, Blake Bortles or Sam Darnold? Um... Oh, Sam. I mean, like, Sam's Sam's first three years stunk. I guess Bortles because he actually put up numbers, but, you know... I don't know, maybe like quarterbacking wise, people would tell you, Sam, I don't know if it's top out of my head, but I know Sam hasn't had a great first three years. So I guess that I would have to say Bortles because he at least had the big breakout uh, 
he had the big breakout sophomore season that that I don't think Donald had. So, but like I that's what's in, that's what that's what's interesting to me, right? Is that you know you're looking at like the first four years or the first five years of a career, mm-hmm. and it's it's not that easy to differentiate. You know what hmm. I mean? Like, hmm. yikes! Bortles Bortles would be a good case. Now that I'm thinking about it out loud, to be like, all right, which quarterback would you rather have? This like A, B, C, but you don't give out the names. You just kind of like give out the stats and right. make people pick. I feel like uh, maybe Bortles is maybe Bortles would be an interesting case of that. All right, so Mike, your final answer here: Are you going? You I, you said it a couple times now. Bust with the caveat. Is that what we're going with? So you're say, so you're still saying that he was a bust from number three overall, but there's a little context there. Maybe he shouldn't have been drafted at three. Maybe he had some things that held him back a little bit. Is that is that your final answer here? Yeah. Yeah, I think when you look at it, he was clearly overdrafted. Um, yeah, he which clearly does not help our perception. Right. So like, it. right. So like, if this kid was a second round pick, like Derek Carr, yeah. the leash probably would be longer. I think you're you're looking at a different situation. But when you look at the the, the, the drafting context, mm-hmm. you look at Manzel, you look at Teddy Bridgewater, you look at Carr, you look at what the Jaguars inevitably accomplished. Look, they got further than they ever had with Blake Bortles under center. You can say whatever you want. Um, I don't think he was set up to fail. That's why I think the broken thing doesn't really work. Okay, then that's a good that's a that's a good answer there because you don't you don't believe that the team really set him up to. I mean, look, look, anybody who gets Allen Robinson, uh, right? (laughs) Like. He had he had the weapons. He had the team. And even though the offensive coordinators were rotating, it felt like they were doing everything they could for Blake Bortles. So Right. Right. Look, Nate would... Hackett's the offensive coordinator for the Packers right now. Right. Greg Olson's put up numbers with Derek Carr. Like yep. the, it's it's one of those things where I think he's gotten a bad rap. I think he should be a backup somewhere. Hmm. It's kind of weird that he's not like really considered a, a long-term backup. He's certainly more talented than Chad Henney or Matt mm. Moore or any of those guys. But yeah, it's a, it's a weird tale on how to. Um, Evaluate a quarterback, really. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, how you, how you look at him. Well, I think moral of the story here, we're going, so we're going with bust. We're officially going with bust for Blake Bortles because that's the, that's the tag that we got to give him here. But the moral of the story, don't overdraft players. Doesn't help in the moment, doesn't help their perception, doesn't help their career out. Just don't do it. Be better at scouting, be better at picking. That's all there is to it. Mike K, everybody, follow all of his great work. He covers the Philadelphia Eagles now. Jags, Jags fans know him from all his great coverage of the Jaguars back in the day. But make sure you follow him. Mike, really appreciate you joining me, man. Thanks for having me. All right, everybody. That's it for the Blake Bortles episode of Buster Broken. But, but we will be back with a brand new episode next week. See you then.